I'm Don Ayers. I'm the Vice President of Technology here at Capstone Green Energy, uh, located in Van Nuys, California. Capstone has evolved quite a bit, actually, um, in a number of different ways. So uh, our focus is generally on operating in many different types of situations and gases and climates as we can. Our products are located worldwide uh, on every continent in the world, including Antarctica. Uh, so a lot of the development work that's gone on over time has been to make the product most robust to be able to survive these different uh, climates. And, and so a lot of the work also has gone into fuels, uh, specifically associated gas fuels, which would come out of the ground at oil and gas sites, uh, to running on more difficult fuels uh, that have higher flame speeds that would combust and cause uh, damage to the hardware if we didn't handle it correctly. The fuels that we've most uh, worked on recently are the higher flame speed fuels. So our traditional product line has always revolved around natural gas, liquid fuels, landfill type gases, wastewater treatment plant gases, some, something with lower BTU content. The higher in BTU content you go, the more difficult it is to burn. And so our work has been with the butane, propane, hydrogen more recently uh, to be able to make sure that our product can, can continue to work as reliably as it does on those fuels as well. So Capstone has a 15-year legacy and research on, on hydrogen, uh, starting back in the mid-2000s when uh, President Bush at the time talked about the hydrogen economy. Uh, we took it upon ourselves to work with some a local university, University of California, Irvine, uh, and their facilities and, and, and their expertise in combustion technologies to help us understand how does our product work when we're operating on hydrogen. Um, that evolved eventually into a Department of Energy, uh, specifically Argonne National Laboratory uh, partnership, uh, where we also work very closely with them on different hydrogen initiatives. What we've done is uh, with that, those partnerships uh, we eventually uh, designed a new injector. This is, looks a lot like our typical injector, but it's actually quite a bit different. It has a plurality of holes, um, not only for mixing the hydrogen uh, to prevent uh, as much uh, NOx emissions, nitrous oxide emissions, uh, but also to help pr project the fuel and, and accelerate it outward. So when the flame higher flame speed occurs, it doesn't want to flash back in on the injector. Uh, so that, this, this was patented in 2019, um, and we've been using it in our tests since then. So hydrogen is a big topic these days, as you hear. Uh, it's one, seen as the most energy-dense uh, form of, of taking our excess renewable energies, whether it's wind or solar, converting it into green hydrogen, which was, is produced uh, through electrolysis using that excess energy, and burning it. Um, and they're talking about it in a number of different ways. And so from our perspective, uh, we can be placed at the source of production, which normally you, most large power plants, you have to actually produce the gas somewhere else and then distribute it, store it at the, at the power plant. And so we actually can be placed at, this, at the location of generation, which gives us a supreme advantage over other technologies. Uh, we also, hydrogen is a byproduct of some production processes. So those customers who produce hydrogen as a byproduct uh, can use our microturbines to help offset some of their electrical costs and also help the environment as well. So for up to the 30% blend that we talked about previously, uh, it's the same hardware, it's the same software. There's no changes that the customers need to do. It just operates off the 30% hydrogen. And, and typically, most, most countries globally that are looking at injecting hydrogen into their natural gas grid are looking at lowers left less than 30 percent. So we should be able to be used no matter where anybody wants to use them. Uh, or in our existing installations, they'll be able to handle that much hydrogen without having to retrofit their systems. Once you go above 30 percent, the hydrogen content then begins to play different factors with the, the, the technology of our standard products. So you have to concern yourselves with how it's going to behave with the combustion as well as how it's handled in the fuel delivery system so that you don't induce leaks. So there's, there's a commercialization project that we are working on that will allow us to handle the hydrogen, to, to inject it in with this into the combustor, as well as to be able to detect if there's any leaks and any ventilation that, that occurs if there is a leak. So we've, we've been working with our domestic partners as well as our international distributors to 
uh, find case studies and pilot projects to be able to run the 100% hydrogen injector at different locations on a trial basis. And we've been successful in being able to operate up to full power uh, on our micro turbines using the, the injector technology without the detrimental effects that we see uh, that you might expect to see when operating on hydrogen.